The foot injury that he suffered back in week two. This will sideline Tom Brady's blindside protector for at least eight weeks. Keep in mind, Wynn spent all of last season on IR as well with a torn Achilles. All right, Coach, with all the problems on the O-line, will all that finally catch up to the Patriots? Well, it, it, it's going to be hard. And, and I, the one thing, the, the shining star for the Jets this past week was the defense in the sense that they were able to disguise coverages. They were able to bring a lot of different pressure looks. Mm -hmm. They were able to generate some things against Cleveland when the offense really couldn't do much uh, of anything. So there'll be issues from a protection standpoint that will be created in this game. Could it catch up to them? Yeah, you, but you look at the, this past week. So they, they lose Nate Soldier, and then they lose Trent Brown, and then they have Isaiah Wynn, and then they sign Marshall Newhouse four days before the game. He starts at right tackle, but then he has to move it to left tackle. And Corey Cunningham, Cunningham. who they traded for at the end of preseason, <laughs> comes in at right tackle, and David Andrews, the starting center, he's got to be replaced. So you're talking about... Three off the the three critical positions on the O line the are two all tackles in the center. Both tackles in the center are are all changed out, and the one guy that's playing a significant amount was signed three days earlier. And then the week before, you had Antonio Brown and all the issues that that he brought in and all the mm -hmm. potential distractions. But it's not really that big a deal, right? We 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 barely talk about it. We we a the A B conversation versus when he was in Oakland mm -hmm. versus New England has has now gone from up here at the top of the mountain to much 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 lower. And you just you move on. I remember playing a game defensively there where we had a, a street free agent who had to start at, at corner. We had just gotten him. Troy Brown, a wide receiver, he was playing slot. Mm -hmm. We had Don Davis, a linebacker, he had to move to safety. And then I think Larry Izzo, a core special teamer, he had to come in and start an inside linebacker, and we ended up winning the game. Because all those guys came in, and they did exactly what we asked them to do, and they played within the context of the game, and the whole team played within the game plan to win the game, and collectively, as a group, we were able to overcome our shortcomings be because everybody pulled a little bit harder and did exactly what we asked them to do. So, the, and I and I appreciate that, and I and I understand that, and I do wonder how much of last week was the Patriot way, and how much of last week was playing the Dolphins, and how much of it is a combination of the two. This week they have the Jets, and that's why you mentioned the Jets' success against the Browns. I don't know if people knew they had the Jets this week, but next week they are in Buffalo. And if Buffalo has a strength of their team right now is their 2-0, it would be their defensive front. It would be their front seven in particular and their ability to get after the quarterback. And I am wondering how many injuries become too many injuries on one unit of your football team. It's not we've lost a safety, we've lost a guard, we've lost a running back. It's not a long list of injuries, but diversified along your team. It is your center's out for the year, your right tackle missed week two, as you mentioned, Marcus Cannon, and now your left tackle, who is your third different left tackle tackle in three years he now is out for at least the next 10 weeks so or eight to ten weeks so at what point do you reach the breaking point on the Patriots offensive line no matter how well they're coached no matter how good their culture is I fear for New England you have to be starting to come close to it to where you are at replacement level players at three of your five offensive line spots yeah but they're the only team that can handle it and the reason why is because they're going to do the reason why I trust them is because they're going to have an all-hands-on deck. If their pass protection gets a little leaky, you know what they're going to do? Max protect. They'll bring in a tight end, bring in a fullback, block it up. Imagine Josh Gordon and A.B. on the same side of the field. So if you want to bring me pressure, no problem. I'm going to block them with eight. I might even have Edelman chipping on the edge and then leaking out being the safety valve. But I can block seven of them. And Tom Brady's going to get rid of the football. That's the reason why you're not going to exploit it. If it was any other team in the league, would I trust them going forward? No, because they don't have the overall football knowledge, and they're not the teachers that New England are, and their quarterback is going to hold on to the football. Aaron Rodgers, when they have O-line problems, what does he do? Instead of getting rid of the ball quicker, what does he do? He holds the ball even more. So Tom Brady and the football intel that they have will be able to correct this. 
at some point, is there going to be a defensive front to be able to give them some problems? Yes. But if you sit there and think you're going to rush four people and get to Tom Brady, no. Their routes will pick you apart. They'll sit in zone, and he'll get the ball to them. If you try to blitz them, they'll max it up. They'll have enough running, uh, running attack to be able to balance it off that you can't tee off on them. But it's something that they will bring attention to more so than any other part of the field. I mean, any other part of the team. And my last thing in closing is football is based on three phases. And before we go out on the field, the coach tells us we need to win two phases of this game to be able to win it. Who going to beat them at special teams and who going to beat their defense, which I believe going to be a top five defense. So they already got two thirds of the game won. So even if their offense gets real conservative and we'll just punt. They still got a great probability to be able to win the game because they know if we go into the game with this game plan, everyone that's out there is going to accept that game plan. So when you have that, that acceptance, Coach, it's a lot easier to get the type of performance that you're looking for. It's that, and, and there's going to be a toolbox. There's going to be a list of things that if, if this happens, what are we going to do? So it could be wide receiver screen, regular screen, quick passing game, so a little bit of mixer, no huddle, the change of tempo, cadence, bring an extra offensive lineman in, let him play tight end, and let him help chip. Yep. Use the tight end to chip. Use the backs to chip. Keep changing it up so that all those things that you think you're going to exploit, now let's put the pressure back on them. Let's put the – I watched the, the Denver game the other day, and I felt so bad for that left tackle who had five holding Get penalties. Balls. And yep. at some point you're thinking – you might want to give him some help. Like, bring somebody <laughs> over there, take a little bit of pressure off this guy. But if you just sit there and say, well, you, you got to play better, you got to do better, uh, you, you're on your own. Okay, if it's not your beat. left tackle and it's not your center, if it's not Gronk, and may not even be Tom Brady, is there a player the Patriots can lose and still be okay? Well, th th well that you is. You can't the lose Tom Brady. Well, okay, so Brady, but Brady's the only one. Brady's the only guy that if we came out today and said this player just got placed on IR, that we'd be on high alert. Is Brady the only one on the roster? Yes. Stephon Gilmore? Dante Hightower? Nope. None of them? Nope. Brady. Okay. Brady. He's the it. only player. Well, then if Bill somehow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Brady. Yes. If Bill gets mono, Bill. I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, you know, Josh, Josh McDaniels will be my next one, probably followed by <laughs> yes. Dante Charnecchia. Unbelievable. We'll see a little of your coach coming off. Has like Eli Manning.